Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. First things first, stand up for just people in general. That, that's the first thing as we kind of break down this volleyball bracket here. Yeah? Uh, the Blair Fleming story has been, you know, the talk of the town for the most part for the for a certain group of people for the past few months, you know, and you know, certain things been going the way that they've been going to the point where Boise State was like, no, nah, we're not playing San Jose State because you know Blair Fleming is transgender. We're not playing San Jose State. So Boise State, you know, they were in the Mountain West semifinals, and then you know they 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 they, they, they just forfeited. Just, just plain and simple, they forfeited. And thus Colorado State was able to get the auto bid by beating a bear, a pretty mid San Jose State team. Pretty mid. And again, a lot of people are like, well, well, unfair competitive advantage. And you know, Blair Fleming is this, and they're saying all these different things that's you know, just just inherently vile and disgusting. You know, these people are saying these things that are inherently vile, inherently disgusting. And, you know, it, 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 just, it just is what it is at this point with these people. You just can't reason with them. You can't reason with people who just don't take logic at face value. You know, Blair wasn't even playing that much, you know, basically like on the bench for the most part, you know, people like, you know, like, uh, you know she's valid. She's valid and she can do whatever she wants, you know. The fact that oh, nobody complained about it for years until you know, you know, a teammate ousted her, and then there's all these lawsuits and you know, people saying this and that, and everything in between now and now it's just it's just it's just too much. It's just too much. It's gotten out of control. But now San Jose State season is over, so they don't have to really, you know, nobody's gonna talk about it for like weeks in the volleyball circles. We probably might still talk about it, but for now, it's done. It is done. And there's no reason to really, you know, make, make make too much of a noise about it. So my bracket is, you know, here. So um, I have a lot of chalk. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a lot of chalk. Um, you know, Pitt is the number one overall seed. Penn State is also a one seed. They beat Nebraska in a pretty good match that I watched the other day. Pitt, of course, you know, they beat Louisville. Like, why are we not surprised here? <laughs> they, they beat Louisville and won the ACC outright. Um, some other notables here as I go down this first part of the bracket. Yes, um, as you can see, I do have, you know, and I'm sorry it's kind of weird, but it's okay. Um, you know, I do have, you know, Pitt, you know, going all the way to the bottom four. Same thing with, or rather, to at least the Elite Eight. At least the elite eight, or whatever whatever we call it here. Texas is also in this bracket. They did not win the SEC. Kentucky did. Kentucky did. Marquette, you know, is a five seed, but they did not win the Big East. The Big East is a rather weaker conference in college volleyball. So you know, Creighton got a two seed. They got a two seed. They at least they got a two seed. Um, that's good. That's good enough. I don't think they just they just didn't have the resume for a one they didn't have it um as we go down this bracket I, I'm not, let me let me let me go past that real quick I, I, I know I know I know y'all saw it but um you didn't see anything you didn't see anything um again there's a lot of good teams in this field I know some people are you know I know some people are like well what about Arizona and again it's like it's like a lot of numbers a lot of number crunching SOS RPI all that stuff. You know, Kansas made it in. I forgot who won the big drop. I think it was Arizona State. But yes, yeah, see, Louisville is a one seed and Stanford is two. Louisville, you know, lost to Stanford, but again, they played twice. So a lot of people are, you know, see, you see that right there in Nebraska, Wisconsin. A lot of people picking that one to be, you know, a third round matchup in the regional semis, you know, and stuff like that. And I, I I don't know what in the world happened here because I've got Louisville, Stanford, Nebraska, Wisconsin here, um, and then you know Pitt, SMU. I think Pitt, SMU will meet again, you know, late. I just 
I, I just don't. I, I want I want the ponies. They but they pleasant surprise, and that's why they're a two seed. Texas Penn State. You know, I think that's not what's going to happen. Yes, my championship pick is Nebraska. I know a lot of people are like, well, that that should be your championship pick. I, 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 I think this Nebraska team, you know, Olivia Babcock and company are great and all, but I think the way Nebraska has been playing, yeah, they did lose Penn State the other day, but I think the way they've been playing has just been so much more consistently great. The teams that they've beaten are much better than what Pitt has beaten in a way. Kinda, not really, you know. Again, I, I just, I just, I think I just want to see heartbreak because Pitt has never won a national championship. I think I just want to see heartbreak, and I think that's what's going to happen here. Pitt will beat Louisville again, though. I really think they will. If they, even if they get across Stanford, I think they'll beat Stanford. But if I'm picking a national champion, I'm picking Nebraska. I'm picking the Cornhuskers to beat Pitt, and it'll be definitely five sets. I think it'll definitely be a five set match. So. You know, just don't 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 quote me. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. My brackets are usually wrong. I know I have a, again. I know I have a lot of chalk, you know, but I just don't think you know. I just don't think this this isn't college basketball where you know you could say, hey, somebody could beat somebody on a given night. I genuinely think college volleyball is in this weird space where it's like there are a lot of top teams that could lose to you know teams that just don't you know aren't very consistent at the end of the day. That also at the same time, there's just so much elite volleyball, you know, being played by all 64 teams that are in this tournament, even the auto bids, you know. I think there's just so much elite volleyball that chalk, chalk is fine. Chalk is fine. In college basketball for the women, chalk is just is just boring. But this here, this just screams elite matchups. You know, I think we're getting elite matchups throughout this entire tournament. Unfortunately, the first two rounds are on ESPN Plus, though. You know, then the, um, you know, the the, the, the basically this, what the equivalent to the Sweet Sixteen is going to be on ESPN U, um, and then the quarterfinals, what I call the NCAA quarterfinals, those are going to be on Saturday and Sunday, December fourteenth and fifteenth. I will be watching those regional quarterfinals. Will be watching. Those four games, the semis will be Thursday, the 19th, and then the 22nd is the national championship. It's going to be beautiful. Um, I know there's some stuff, you know, it's with the PBF getting a new deal, CBS and stuff like that. I know people are, you know, players are getting signed all over the world to, you know, play either in other countries or the PBF or in League One volleyball. Either or, it, it doesn't really matter at this point because what I'm focused on right now is what I think this national championship will look like. I know my screen isn't as big as I want it to be, but hey, you're seeing it anyway. Um, cannot wait for these the, this tournament. This is going to be a tournament for the first time I will watch this tournament, college volleyball national tournament. And for the first time, I will see a national champion be crowned, and it will be crowned on ABC on the 7th to 22nd at 3 o'clock Eastern time, and it's going to be beautiful. Um, ESPN Plus sucks, but, hey, you know, we'll eventually get there. I think we'll eventually get there. What I think volleyball needs is for basically everybody to step up a little bit more, just a little bit more. NBC did, you know, a pretty decent job, but, again, a lot of their games went, you know, they were just sweeps. Fox had like two games, but again, there needs to be more. ABC definitely needs more. There, there's, there, there's, there's a crazy amount of games that you know just kind of got pushed to ESPN Plus or ACC Network Plus or SEC Network Plus, and it was kind of annoying, really annoying. When I know there's open slots in ABC, but ESPN chooses not to use them. You know, yeah, that yeah, that one PM window, you know, is kind of. You know, can be reserved for like, you know, maybe a, a sprinkle of WNBA here and there in the fall, you know, for the playoffs, uh, the PLL championship, you know, some Formula One, you know, some other soccer, and, you know, NWSL too, which I'm going to start covering more. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely room for a little bit more. I think there, there, there can be maybe like five, six matches that should be on ABC on a Sunday that can counteract the NFL because volleyball is gaining traction that's why we cover 
That's why that's why we're here to cover this sport, baby. So, um, you know, like again, you know, like people like Abbott Volleyball, you know, you know, make a great point. You know, ESPN Plus is just not the way to grow things. You need more on TV. You can't be stuffing these games on ESPNU or ACC Network or SEC Network or putting them on the Big Ten Network in times that don't make any sense, you know, just grow the game, but making it, you know, better to watch, you know, Big Ten Plus is terrible. But yeah, so now you see my predictions. I know it, it's going to be terrible. You know, there's lots of great players in this tournament. So many. Madison Skinner, Izzy Stark, you know, again, you know, I mean, there's just so many that I can't even name them all off the top of my tongue. It's going to be great. Can't wait to watch this tournament. Can't wait to see you on December 23rd, the day after the tournament, to talk to the national champion. And, you know, it's just some other stuff because I know my bracket is going to be terrible. It's going to go bad, but it doesn't matter. We're the, we're here. We're here, baby. So, yeah, get on about it here, and I'll see you later.